Hi everyone, it's Neve here and welcome to my Art German channel. Today we're going to be playing with making mail art postcards um, and this is part of my 100 day project that I did recently. So I'm starting off with a 4x6 piece of just plain card and these are all images I have sourced from old National Geographics, um, printed brochures, things I've got from museums, um, all sorts of places. They're all highly basic graph photographic images that I'm putting together in interesting ways. So the back is an old map piece that was out of a National Geographic. Down the bottom is a bit of a forest that I've torn in half. And then I've used this cool picture of an elephant, which I've just cut in half and I hate wasting things. So quite often if I cut something in half, I will use the other half in some way. Um, as you can see here, I'm using <laughs> them both on the same piece, which I really like. So it gives this um, effect of this elephant train happening. Um, on the left hand side you can sort of see all the different types of images. I've got fish, I've got um, icebergs, um, bits of paper, vintage text, all sorts of things that sort of tie together that I can use. Um, I also quite like using the little Tim Holtz, um, what do you call them, transparencies, wings, just, you know, as something different. So it's just sort of combining all those vintagey things. One thing I do like doing with my cut images though is putting a bit of a shadow on them or an outline around them. So in this case, I'm using my Stila Bila oil pencil and I'm just gonna wet that slightly to get a um, sort of shadowy feathered effect. Now you will find because most of the collage images are um, gloss paper, they're not matte. So putting something watercolour on this will possibly um, bead a little bit or not sink into the paper. So you may get some interesting effects. Uh, I don't particularly mind, it just sort of gives me a background image, but if it really bothers you, you might choose you know, a um, Tombow marker or an alcohol marker to do something similar. So once I've done that, then I'm going through and trying to find some different bits and pieces to add on it too. So with my um, magazine collages like this, or post-art collages, collages, I suppose, I do tend to go a little bit vintage and um, tends to have a lot of natural nature elements in it. So butterflies, botanical images um, and so on. That's why I find old copies of National Geographic um, really awesome. I was very lucky, um, a teaching friend of mine retired she had copies, all the copies, going back to 1978 and didn't want to take them down to, um, as she moved, so she donated them all to me. So I've got a huge big um, bookshelf full of magazines that I can cut up and, and use in different ways. But I know if you go to lots of um, uh, secondhand stores or um, op shops, that type of thing, you'll probably find them. Sometimes you have to pay a few dollars for them and um, quite often people are just trying to get rid of them. So if you put a call out on social media, I'm sure you could probably end up with some. The other types of magazines that are good for this sort of stuff is um, the free magazines you got in airlines. They've often got a really good mix of um, vintage, or not vintage, sorry, um, travel, photography, botanical stuff, um, gardening, like ho Better Homes and Gardens that have a mix of gardening and cooking and pet and craft tend to have a few different things that you can use in that as well. The book that you just saw me grab this um, apple out of is another collage book um, which has got thousands of images in it that you can cut out. So it's free basically clip art that you can use and cut out. Um, so I'll try and find the name of that and pop it up but um, there's lots of books like that around that you can use. Again, you can sort of see me cutting the butterflies in half, getting them going off the page, but I'm not wasting anything. I'm still gluing them on the page to get that sort of effect. And you can see me trimming down as I go along every time. I find that gives, makes it a lot easier for me to see what my actual canvas frame is like so that I have a bit of an idea of what I'm working with. One of the things I do like to add on to all of these is a little bit of text. These are Tim Holtz small talk, I think they're called, or no, vintage clippings, I think, um, stickers. And they're just clipped out of 
um, vintage books and made into stickers. So you could have your own vintage books you cut up and just find a quote or a phrase or some words that you could put together. One thing I do like to add on to all my mail art postcards is some actual postage. Um, whether I make faux postage, so I make my own postage stamps or use stamps that I've found um, and pop those onto my pieces. So my mother-in-law is very good at collecting stamps. I don't mail enough stuff out to um, actually get stamps. Um, lots of these are Australian stamps. Um, obviously they're pre-cancelled and they're not valuable, um, but it just adds that little bit of extra something to the page. I'm then using these cancelling stamps from Darkroom Doors to cancel them out and it's got things like um, airmail and so on them. It just gives again that postage vibe to the whole piece. So the final thing that I'm doing is edging my entire postcard with black pen because I really hate the, the cut white lines. So here you can see the whole piece together. You can see how the shadowings worked. You can see the cancellations on my postage stamp. Um, you can see the butterflies in the background and this is the final piece. Every road should have a path but the first, the first step of the journey. So the words kind of play together with what's happening on the page. So I hope you have a go. Really, really easy way to get into collage. Until next time, bye for now.